hear you on the air. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. I'm a senior citizen up here in Jackson's Point. Jackson's Point. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. If you want to see a UFO, there's one right in the sky right now. You're kidding. Uh, I'm not kidding. Where are you? I'm... Are you in your house? No, sir. I'm... Well, I'm in the house now, but for the last hour, I've been standing out in the uh, recreation field here, watching it through binoculars. Well, what are you seeing, sir? Would you tell us? An object that looks like a Christmas tree or a triangle with blue and red white lights flashing like a, like a psychedelic nightclub. <laughs> You've never seen one like it in your life. And uh, I'm a believer in UFOs, uh, but I have never seen one until tonight. Now, now listen, uh, excuse the question. You're not drinking, are you? I certainly am not. Okay. I'm a teetotaler. You're a teetotaler, eh? Diabetic, as a matter of fact. <laughs> My goodness. You say you're a senior citizen. How old are you, sir? Pardon? How old are you? 65. You're 65. Wow, oh, you're still young. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you mind giving us your name? You don't have to. Uh, well, uh, I wouldn't mind giving you my name, but there's going to be a lot of people uh, stare at me in the morning, so I'd rather not. No, I, I disagree with you. Give your name, Joe. I think most people, I think that most people are inclined to agree, because so many people, I've interviewed many myself. My name is Joseph Scott. Mr. Scott? That's right. Listen, Mr. Scott, I've just been informed that our investigator, with his uh, nose to the task, uh, has caught your remark, and I think he'd like to ask you some questions. I'm referring to Mr. Henry McKay, yep. who is the Metro Area UFO investigator, who has spoken to many people like yourself who believe that they have seen this type of thing. Would you like to talk to him? Sure would. All right, just a moment. Mr. McKay, can you hear me? Hello, yes, I can. Uh, have you heard this uh, gentleman's comments? Uh, just briefly, the fact that he has been watching his Cuban ocular. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, sir, uh, Joe, I got your first name, Joe. What is your last name? Scott. Joe Scott? And you're a senior citizen living up at Jackson's Point, and you've told us that you've seen something through your binoculars outside, uh, which you believe is, is an unidentified flying object. I'm going to turn you over to Mr. Mr. McKay and let him ask you a few questions about that, because he'll know better what to ask you than I would. Mr. McKay? Right. Uh, I believe Mr. Scott can hear you now. Go ahead, sir. Hello, Joe. Hello, uh, Mr. McKay. Yes, I'm glad to hear your voice. Hello. Glad to meet you. Yes, um, could you just give me, I'll ask you some questions very briefly, and just give me some short answers. Right. Uh, what direction are you facing? South. At Jackson's Point, you were facing I'm looking, I was looking south, yeah. Yes. And yeah. you were watching two binoculars. Pardon? You were watching the object through binoculars. Yes, I was. And, uh, how long is it, uh, is it still visible? Uh... I imagine if I went out there now, I could probably see it. All right. Could you estimate the the uh, altitude and the direction? Close. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, down towards Toronto way. I don't say it's over Toronto, but it's down Toronto way. Could be a lot farther than that. Yes. Uh, fairly. Fairly well up in the sky. Uh, a 45-degree angle, approximately? Pardon? Would it be a 45-degree angle? About a 45-degree angle, yes. Right. Yeah, that's the way the blocks were uh, pointing, yeah. Is there any sound associated with the... None whatsoever. All right, and uh, to the naked eye, what does it look like? Uh, it looks like a, just a passing glow. Uh, uh, like uh, a faraway uh, uh, bunch of little lights that would be uh, going through a fog. And uh, through the binoculars, is there any details noticeable? Uh, then it assumes uh, like a, a rect uh, rectangle shape, like a Christmas tree, with a point to the top. And I am not the, uh, I, I'm not the only one that witnessed this. Um, uh, the superintendent of 
the lodge and his wife, and we're out there with me, uh, watching. As a matter of fact, uh, we put out there quite a uh, while before we see this stationary one. Uh, we see two heading, uh, I would say, northwest, right over the top of the lake. And they were uh, pulsing too. Is it me? Is there any aircraft in the vicinity? Uh, uh, not to my knowledge. I wouldn't okay. say these were aircraft at the time. I would say uh, I've been uh, associated with flying and so forth and whatnot. Now uh, I can recognize a plane in the sky at night. All right, fine. Thank you very much. I think we'll turn the program back to uh, Mr. Knight. And uh, we'll, by now we should have many observers on this object. Well, I hope they're looking. Thanks very much for calling. Right. Mr. McKay, don't go away, eh? Mr. McKay? Don't go away. Uh, Mr. Scott? Yes? Let me thank you very much for contributing to our program tonight. Thank you. Okay? And we'll say goodbye to you for the time being. Mr. Knight? Yes? yes. May I interject? Would you tell Mr. McKay to play a visit to Jackson's Point at some time? Um, are, are, you call, are you on the same phone line as Mr. Scott? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I see you take it over from Mr. Scott. Yes, this is the superintendent. Oh, Jack, then you have observed the same things that Mr. Scott has just described to us. Yes. I see. And uh, do you go along with what he said? I've been a ufologist for 15 years. I see. Um, I would like to speak to Mr. McKay. All right, you're there, are you, Henry? Yes, I am. Uh, would, would you go ahead? Hello, Mr. McKay. Hello. How long have you been a fighting ufologist? Well, I'm not uh, just at the point right now. We're more interested in this actual sighting. Yes, we are, Mr. McKay, aren't we? Yes. And, of course, we're interested, too, in your intellect in regards to these sightings and your comprehension of the totality of the analogy of ufology. That's true. Indeed. Let us judge ourselves carefully, Mr. McKay. Uh, Jack, since that's uh, Tuan Knight again, since that's the only name we have for you, if you're going to go ahead and carry on this type of a discussion with Mr. McKay, I must step in and get your full uh, name and address and so forth, since we have all that from Mr. McKay. Would you mind giving that to us? I will get in touch with Mr. McKay in your future. Well, well, you're on the air. Do you have any reason for not giving us your, uh, your background, sir? I have a very strong reason. Oh, you have a strong reason? Well, it strikes me as very strange that you would, uh, in a way, uh, confront Mr. McKay with the statements you've just made without telling us who you are. Okay. I mean, you can't be just a voice in the night on CFGM. Okay, my name is Mr. Fuller, Reg Fuller. Reg Fuller? Yeah. It's not Jack. No. I see. Uh, do you doubt Ms. what Mr. McKay uh, is, says or what's been quoted about him for some reason? Okay. I underestimate his intellect. You underestimate his intellect? In regards to ufology, yes. Uh-huh. You know very much about Mr. McKay? Yes. You do? Yes. Uh, Mr. McKay, do you know this man? I doubt it. You don't think you know him? No, I don't think so. Uh-huh. Well, Mr. Fuller, you understand that the, the object of this program tonight is very much the object that Mr. McKay seems to have, yes. and that is to, to find out, to dig out knowledge on UFOs and make it available to other people, not to sway their, their belief in this necessarily, but, but just to get the facts in front of them so that they can draw their own conclusions. Is there anything wrong with that? I agree with you, sir. Okay. Then we don't have any acts to write. I don't think so. Ah, oh, wonderful. Uh, Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. You too. Okay. <laughs> Mr. McKay, are you still there? Uh, All right. I wanted to get that straightened out because I'm just afraid Mr. Fuller left a kind of a bad taste, you know, in the air. And I wanted to get that clear that he didn't have an axe to grind. Uh, Mr. McKay, I'm glad that you were able to join the program a little bit earlier than we expected. We've got an idea of the types of questions that you asked when you're trying to authenticate or disprove a reported UFO sighting. Yes. Would you tell us, sir, why you became interested in this subject? You've obviously put an awful lot of time and effort into it. Well, my original interest uh, began with the question of whether there actually were reports of UFOs or not. Uh, discount all the reports and uh, find the disabled with the pilots and people who reported these sightings. 
thank you very much, Stop and Todd, for filling in for us. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I'm at a loss to explain which is just what has just happened on phone phone, really. For some reason, all of our lines were jammed, and we've had to clear all of the phone calls, so the people were holding on. Would you mind calling us up again, and we'll start over? Uh, I don't know. Maybe someone from Bell Telephone could someday figure out what actually happened there. But Ian and I went through our normal process, and yet you heard the sounds, the distortion that occurred on the program, and I must apologize to you for it. We'll get right back to our calls again, and I hope that that won't happen again. We'll go to line one. Phone form, good evening. Yes. I, I'm sorry for that mix-up. Were you one of the people who was uh, waiting? Yeah, well, I just dialed it, and then uh, they put me on hold. Yeah, okay, maybe it's just that there are too many people dialing in at once to get on the program. But we're talking about UFOs, Ed. Do you have something to tell us? Yeah, um, like, i never seen a UFO before. Okay. Uh, I was, Neither have I. I was just wondering, um... Hello? Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was wondering, you know what the uh, radar is that we have now, right? Radar? Yeah. Right. You know, uh, couldn't they, uh, like, catch one? Like, detect one in the in midair. Mr. McKay, are you still standing by? Mr. McKay, are you still there? I'm, I'm not getting Henry McKay in here on the conference line. Would you try to, uh, ring up Mr. McKay, Ian? And we'll try to get him back on the program. Okay, sir. Uh, Mr. McKay, we seem to have lost him in, the, in that uproar of telephone uh, noises we had before. So uh, I'm certainly not in a position to answer that. But I would think that, yes, uh, it's quite possible that our Department of Defense, possibly even our uh, the Department of Government dealing with national communications, uh, must have some evidence of something that has been picked up on their radar scopes. I see. Because uh, what I was wondering was that, you know, it's on the radio and there's nothing, you know, like in the paper or on television. And uh, when you brought the subject up tonight about the UFO, yes. it struck me, you see, and especially with this talk here at uh, Jackson Point, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't uh, too sure whether it was true or not. But uh, makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Are you inclined to believe that we're being visited from outer space? For me? Yeah, are you inclined to believe that? Yes, I am. Yeah. You, you think that it's logical and possible? Oh, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, that's my feeling exactly. I'm a bit of a Thomas. I like to put my finger in the wound, but, but on the other hand, it's, it's hard to deny such a rush of reports from so many types of people mm -hmm. on these UFO sightings. Listen, thanks for calling. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Phone for him. You're on the air. Go ahead. Oh, I'm calling in to verify the saying at Doctor's Point this evening. You are? Yes. Are you calling from the same house? No, I'm not. I see. Where do you live? I live uh, in the beach, so just a few miles from Doctor's Point. Uh-huh. And what have you seen? I uh, saw the same things this evening, and there's three of them. The same things? You saw three of these things? Yes. Are they out there now? No, they're not. This is in here about 3 o'clock. Around 8 p.m. Uh, would you describe one of these things? I when we stop. Oh, wait a minute. I'm informed that Mr. McKay is back. We'll let him do the questioning, okay? Yes. Just a moment, please. Hello, Henry. Hello. We have just found another uh, person out in the Jackson's uh, Point area uh, to verify that earlier call. It's a lady at Willow Beach. Would you like to talk to her? I uh, yes, I would. Oh, go ahead, Henry. Hello. Hi. Hi, um, did you see the object yourself? Yes, I did. I saw the three of them. Could you describe the, um, the evening, please? Pardon me? Could you describe the action? Uh, the first one, it went down towards Toronto and disappeared, and the other two were just hovering, like at a standstill. And when the first one disappeared, the second one followed. And when it disappeared, the third one did the same thing. All traveling the same direction? Yes. And uh, about 9.30, I saw another one go down the same way. 9.30 this evening? Yes. Did you walk here through binoculars? Uh, no, I didn't have any. Any sound attached to this? No. Would you, could you estimate the altitude? No. And, uh... In relation to where you're located, uh, okay. where would they be, uh, what angle would it be? Did you 
Would you like to meet the angle from your position? How high will you be in the sky? Oh, you know, I could have been a plane that I couldn't. Wouldn't be directly over your head? Oh, uh, no, they weren't. They were up. To the left? Are you familiar with the... Uh, oh, yeah, they were down, like, going towards the trial away. Yes, that would be south. Yes. Did you observe the objects first in a, in a westerly direction or easterly? Yes. In a westerly direction. Well, see, what are the cloud conditions up there? Are you very... Yeah, uh, it's very, very cloud. It's very clear. Very clear up there, isn't it? Uh-huh. Because I was just out and it's very cloudy. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for calling, eh? All right, thank you. Bye. Uh, bye-bye. Okay, Mr. McKay, you'll hold on, will you? Yes, I will. I must apologize for that telephone mix-up earlier, Henry. Uh, I'm still at a loss to explain it. It just seemed that everything on the, in the whole telephone system here jammed. We had to clear all the lines and start over in, in order to get back to where we were. Very mysterious. Would you, you'll stay there, will you? Yes, I will. Okay, we'll be right back with phone for Back to Dave. Uh, Dave, what was it, November, about uh, four years ago now, or was it five? 1973. 1973. We're talking five years ago already. Um, so that's five years and a couple of weeks ago. Um, we were doing a show here, and we had conferenced in Henry McKay, the very well-known Toronto UFO investigator, and um, we... Um, had arranged for him to, well, no, we hadn't arranged. As a matter of fact, some folks called us from out of town who uh, claimed to be watching a UFO at that very time. That's right. And um, we mentioned a certain name, as you relate in your book, and uh, all of a sudden everything went screwy here on the air. We were knocked off the air. Our callers were knocked off the telephone lines. There was a very strange sound on the air at that time. And uh, what were you doing? I know, where I, I know what I was doing. I was sitting here and my hair was standing straight up. What were you doing? <laughs> well, I was sitting in Oakville taping the show because, as a matter of fact, I was uh, uh, associated with him at a time in a UFO course that he was teaching uh, in Toronto. And he mentioned uh, that he was going to be on the show doing a phone-in thing. And I thought, well, we'll see what kind of uh, calls we get about UFO sightings in the area recently. So I taped the show. And uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't think too much of the, uh, the noise, the interference at the time. I thought it was a technical malfunction. And as a matter of fact, it wasn't until uh, two or three years later when something else came up. I heard an interview with uh, another UFO researcher in the area who mentioned that uh, several Toronto UFO researchers have been having trouble with their telephones. In other words, um, their telephone calls concerning UFO research have been interrupted by some weird interference. He was being interviewed on a CBC radio show at the time, and he mentioned the fact that even a, um, a radio show concerning UFOs had been jammed. That was the word he used, and that triggered my memory. And I remembered the incident, and I said, darn it, I got a tape of that show. I'm going to play it again and see what happened, just to refresh my memory, and I played it. And uh, then I decided to get hold of you and find out if you'd found any mechanical reason for uh, that particular interference. And to tell the truth, I was really surprised that you hadn't. You know, I thought there would have been a natural uh, explanation for that. Well, to the extent that we investigated it, we didn't. We were not able to find uh, the reason for it either from our own station engineer nor from the Bell Telephone Company. Right. So we really had no obvious explanation for it in any event. Yeah. But and then you went further than that. Yeah, right. I got hold of an electronics expert, and he analyzed the signal from the tape, and his conclusions were that in order to create such an interference on your show, some electromagnetic source with a power at least twice the power with which you were transmitting would have to be responsible for jamming you off the air. And that would mean something in the neighborhood of 100,000 watts, which is pretty strong. And as you know, there's nothing around here with that capability. Now, again, we're jumping to conclusions whether we, when we say, when we speculate that there was any relationship between 
this interference and the UFO that was being reported at the time. But nevertheless, the whole thing was more of an attention-getting device to grab my attention to the fact that uh, Jerry Armstrong, the mention of Jerry Armstrong's name had apparently triggered this right. interference and it caused me to get into the investigation of the events of the book. As I recall, I didn't understand his name and I was getting him to repeat it. Uh, what actually happened, um, and, and this is fresh in my mind because I recently tried to take it, was that uh, he meant you, he got into an altercation with Henry McKay on yeah. the show, yes. and you made him uh, reveal his name. You mentioned that you don't usually do that on a radio show, but since, uh, because of the tone of the conversation, you wanted to know his name, and he revealed it. But then a few minutes later, somebody else telephoned in and mentioned his name, and it was at the second mentioning of his, of his name by somebody else ah. that the interference started. Ah, yes, yeah, because Jerry Armstrong and I had words uh, because he was questioning the credibility of Henry. Uh, it appeared that way. That's yeah. the way it appeared to me. It appeared. Uh, I'm pretty sensitive to those things. I don't allow badgering on the show. Right. And uh, so immediately uh, the hairs on the back of my neck went up. And I said, well, all right, I'll allow this to continue, providing me, we, you let us know who you are. You know who we are. Mm -hmm. Now let's make a fair game. Tell us who you are. And uh, because of um, the, his profession at the time, he preferred to remain anonymous. Uh, but it, it, it was so important to him that he finally uh, reluctantly uh, revealed his name. Right. Yeah. And that's when we mm -hmm. were the pants off Ian, yeah. I know that. Well, uh, and Ian can verify that up until that time on his show, there'd never been that type of interference at any time. And uh, since that time, any of my other producers can verify it has never happened again, except about a year ago when we brought you on the show again, and we played the tape of what had happened in 1973, and lo and behold, 15 minutes later, you could hear it coming again. Mm -hmm. Weird sound coming, and we were talking, and you could hear it in the background coming, and we are all looking at one another, wow, here it is again, and after we acknowledged it, it just gradually faded down and away, that was the end of it. Yeah.